Hello, soon to be nurse practitioners. My name is Ms. Cohen, and this is the Nurse Practitioner Board's Review Women's Health and Sexually Transmitted Infections lecture. We're going to start with the menstrual cycle. Just, you know, nothing too crazy. This is a review of what happens, okay? Um, you know, the perfect menstrual cycle is 28 days, but we know that uh, human nature, even though um, it's perfect. It's not always the same for everybody, right? So let's discuss about this 28 day cycle, assuming every female um, has this 28 day cycle. So follicular phase days one through 14. This is when the follicle stimulating hormone stimulates the eggs into producing the estrogen. Estrogen increases, which stimulates the growth of the endometrium to prepare for plantation of the ovum. And around day 14, plus or minus a couple of days, that's when the female is most fertile. Um, I don't know if you know, but they sell these uh, kits for getting pregnant, actually. Um, I, that's what I used, and it worked very well. So you check with a urine dip um, stick your urine every day, and it tells you when the um, luteinizing hormone is at the highest level, which is when you're most fertile. And you can see here in this picture, that's that small window right here. It's, it's like 28 hours, um, less than 48. And that's the best window to get pregnant. All right. So in case you want to get pregnant, <laughs> look into that. <laughs> if you don't want to get pregnant, stay away from that window. And then the mid-cycle, day 14, ovulatory phase, all right? Again, luteinizing hormone induces ovulation. That's the best chance for the female to get pregnant. And the luteal phase. The luteal phase happens between days 14 and 28. It helps stabilize the endometrial lining. You can see down here, that's what we're referring to, the endometrial lining right here, right? All right, and then you get menstruation. Once menstruation happens, because there was no implantation of the egg in the endometrium, the estrogen and progesterone will drop. Do you have to go crazy on this topic? No, but it's important that you understand what's going on. Let's move on. So when we discuss contraception, this is a very important topic for the boards. Make sure you pay attention. This is really, really key. You see how I have some areas that are bolded in green, all right? That is super important that you know and comprehend. So let's review. First and foremost, all right, warning. If a female of a reproductive age complains of acute abdominal or pelvic pain, you must perform a pregnancy test. You have to rule out pregnancy because what if it's an ectopic pregnancy, all right? Female of reproductive age who complains of acute abdominal pelvic pain, make sure she's not pregnant, all right? So let's get started with oral contraception, all right? Oral contraception, so many different kinds. Do you have to memorize them all? Not necessarily by name, but you have to understand the differences and when you would use one versus the other. The good thing about combi um, combined oral contraceptives is that for the most part, they have only a 9% failure rate, all right? So women say, oh, I got pregnant on the pill. Well, were you taking it the way you were supposed to? They recommended to take it every day around the same time. All right, examples of the oral contraceptives include the low estrin FE, which includes additional iron, because as you know, women who are pregnant, um, use utilize the iron they don't necessarily make more iron but they certainly utilize more of it because they are increasing in size right they gain like 20 30 40 pounds whatever and they have a baby so this one contains additional iron there's the orthonovum the orthotricycline uh orthotricycline low seasonal the yes these are all great but they're oral contraceptives um, then you have an example would be the progesterone only pills. Again, 99% failure rate. This is what they call the mini pill. This pill, pay attention, it's safe for breastfeeding. Okay, progestin only pill, it's safe for breastfeeding. Did I make that clear? <laughs> it should be taking at the same time every day. 
and a late dose of more than three hours or missed day, you would want to use a condom because obviously it's not as effective. This is super important that you know. Pay attention. Contraindications to oral contraceptives, regardless which one it is. Smokers over the age of 35 years of age that smoke 15 or more cigarettes per day. That is a contraindication to oral contraceptives. We'll discuss why or somebody who has a history of increased risk for clotting, blood clotting, all right? Such as thromboembolytic disorders, like DVTs, like a thrombus and emboli. Genetic coagulation defects, like factor V or factor V, um, Leiden disease, it's an example, or prolonged immobility, such as with surgery, okay? Inflammation or acute infections of the liver with increased liver function test result. Cardiovascular disease. Conditions that increase the risk of stroke, which may include migraines, CVAs, TIAs, or hypertension. So when you sit down on the test and they ask you about a contraceptive option for a female who they'll tell you is over the age of 35, is a smoker, you automatically know that oral contraceptives is not an option for, for that individual. 